Good morning, beautiful people. I haven't done one of these in a while. I thought I would sit here by the sun, catch me a little rays. I haven't been out in the sun here for, for a minute. Um, but it's a beautiful day and there's not very many summer days left. So I thought I would come out here and enjoy this. Enjoying my little bit of coffee, coffee. Uh, this will be a bearish mindset coffee. <laughs> Thanks to my brother, Carolyn from Miami. If you guys want to learn how to trade gold, he's the master goldman. I mean, I trade gold pretty good. And on the team at TTA, we traded gold pretty good. But I got to admit, you know, some folks are still better than me and he's one of them. <laughs> anyway, I hadn't done one of these in a while and I thought I would uh, share some of my thoughts with you. Some of what's going on in my life. So I got new financial goals, right? You guys know I've been trading for a bit and that's going pretty good. But I got new financial goals and I've ran into some mental obstacles about it, right? I keep bumping against the ceiling. Now I have the ceiling many times in my life. And by the way, uh, sorry if I, well, I'm just gonna go ahead and take a bite. Is this loud? Sorry about that. I've been on this trading journey now for about, what, three years or something like that. And I've been seeking to break through new thresholds. And in the process of breaking through these thresholds, I ran into some, what I've come to believe is just mindset issues. I don't know if it's related to money. I don't know if it's related to success. I don't know if it's related to just breaking out of of certain level of comfort but you know i'm always in the search for more information more knowledge on how i can improve my mind and how I can I help other people do the same and so i was watching actually i was watching a lady preacher in spanish on instagram so i guess instagram is good for something i'm gonna take another sip And um, she was talking about the lessons of the cross. And she was talking about the lessons of the cross and I found my mind wandering in another direction. And I felt like God was giving me some revelation. And what came to me was one of the lessons of the cross is that freedom is found in sacrifice. And that led to, wow, so freedom through suffering I thought that that's kind of different, right? Freedom through suffering. And so that led me then to look for discipline equals freedom. I know I, I had heard that theme before. I didn't know where. So I did a little Google search and search, you know, if I'm good old Jocko, Jocko Wilkins is it? The author of Extreme Ownership. And I saw a short video called Discipline Equals Freedom. This is super powerful. And so as I started considering what areas of my life I need to be more disciplined in, because this is what I discovered and this is what I teach to my teammates and my students, is if you want to become disciplined in your trading, then look for other areas in your life where you need discipline and apply dif discipline to those areas. Tie that discipline to something else that you're already doing habitually well and soon that discipline will become part of your habit. And so as I started considering that, I realized, well, shoot, you know, I need to get more disciplined in my physical body. It's one of the things that I've discovered. It's not, it's not a discovery. <laughs> That's a fact. I'll have to look at the mirror or stand <laughs> or stand on the scale. It'll tell me it, right? Especially at this at this 58 years of age of mine. And so um, as I started considering that, it was like, I need to commit, I need to make a plan and then I need to commit to that plan. Um, because I know, again, I've done this before in my life, right? I know that if I apply discipline to one area of my life, it's going to affect all the other areas of my life. It's inevitable. Is, is this creating a shadow here? I guess it is silent creating a shadow, but it's also keeping my eyes from getting hit by the sun. So I'm gonna keep it there. Um, you know, Jim Rohn says, you know, if you start a little little discipline in one area of your life, that little discipline will lead to the next thing. He talks about how if you don't take 30 minutes 
of walking every day, for example, if you should be walking 30 minutes a day and you're not walking it, then you are going to live the consequences of that in years to come, right? And so he says, and if you're not doing the 30 minutes of walking, you probably also have high blood pressure. And if you probably have high blood pressure, you probably also are in financial distress or suffering financial stress. And if you, you know, it's just basically saying it's an accumulation of things, right? Because the way we do a thing is the way we do everything. And so as I thought about that, I thought, well, you know what? It, I need to get more discipline in my body. Now, I bought a Peloton about a year and a bit ago. And for 52 consecutive weeks, I exercised. Um, and I did lose like something like 14 pounds. Um, and basically, that was kind of like nonchalantly doing it, you know? So as I thought about it, it was like, you know, it's because I've not really committed to it. I've not committed to getting in shape. I've not committed to it. And now I, I'm trying to, okay, so, so now I'm going to take this new discipline that I'm going to apply to my life, which I've known before, but I've not done it in a while. I'm going to apply this discipline in my life so then I can take that discipline and translate it into my other goals, into the financial goals that I have, you know, what I want for my family, where I want to be a year from now and stuff like that. You know, it's just a great time now at the end of this year. It's a great time to be thinking already about that, being preparing for next year, setting your goals for next year. And so anyway, uh, I thought I would leave this message here as a way to encourage you and inspire you. And I hope that I do inspire you with my results, not by talking about it, not uh, not making this as a motivation, but but as uh, with my results. Right now, I weigh uh, a gaudy uh, 255. And like I said, that's a, that's already down 14 pounds from where I was not very long ago. Well, I guess a year ago or something like that, which is distressing when you think about it. I mean, my frame is 6'1", and people tell me I carry it well. That doesn't matter. I know that I shouldn't be carrying this weight. I know I shouldn't be in this shape. And as a former athlete, to me, it really, it really rots my confidence. You know, it eats at my confidence because I know I shouldn't be in this shape and I know I could do better. And so I've made the commitment. I wrote down a plan. I made a commitment for the next six months. And I've already started it. I've been three days now. And, and, and this is my mindset. I am going to suffer for the next six months for the benefit of the rest of my life. And it's interesting. When I took this mindset and I wrote down my plan, everything became automatic. Like I cut sugars out. I'm doing carbs when I do carbs only in the morning. I am giving myself a day off on Sunday. A lot of activities happen during the weekend that I need to just give myself the grace to it. And I also know I do better when I have something to look forward to, you know, a little cookie or something at, on Sunday, you know. Um, you gotta know your own mindset, you gotta know your mind and how you work and how your discipline works and when to, when to ease off, you know. You can't be going hard all the time. I'm one of those people that goes hard all the time and hard all the time just makes you break down. And so not to make this video much longer, all I'm going to say is um, I have set myself a goal for the next six months to go down to 205, okay? So I'm at 255 right now. I'm going to 205. That's 50 pounds that I'm going to shed off of my body. I have a before picture already, but it's so embarrassing. I didn't want to post it. <laughs> so when I have the after, because I already have the before picture. So when I have the after, I will show you, you the after, okay? But this is a way for me to make myself accountable to the process that I said I was going to do um, by posting this. And also as an encouragement that if, if you don't get started with me in this journey, perhaps six months from now when you see the results, then you will, okay? Um, and, and this is the bottom line. If you want to be free of whatever it is that you are dealing with in your life, you have to suffer the payment of discipline because the payment of, the, of regret will be way, way bigger. I was on the Peloton last night doing my nightly exercise, which has now gotten harder, right? Because I'm actually, I'm actually, um, I have a plan and I'm working that plan and that plan is hard, right? So. I'm on, I'm on it, I'm on it, and I had this vision all of a sudden. I had a vision, wow, 
of me being 90 years old and looking back at this day and saying to myself, I could have gone harder so that I would have a better health at 90. And so all of a sudden I got me an idea. For the sake of my 90 to 100 run, because <laughs> I'm going for 100, for the sake of my 90 to 100 run, I am going to go all out now. I'm going to suffer for the next six months to get to 205, and then I am going to suffer the discipline of habit for the rest of my life. You know, I'm not, I don't have to go as hard once I reach my goal, but I have to continue going hard to maintain. So it's gonna be a kind of different kind of hard, but it's not going to be the hard that I'm doing now. This is what Tim Robbins calls massive action, right? I'm going through the massive action now so that then later on I can ease off a little bit and just maintain, all right? So I'm encouraging you, if there's an area in your life that you are suffering right now because of lack of discipline, then make the commitment to discipline, suffer the short-term process that you have to suffer for so that you can be forever free. You know, that's the lesson to me from the cross. That's the lesson of watching Jesus do what he went through. You know, he suffered for the time that he did. And now he's king of kings and lord of lords forever. And he did that to make us free. And so I am going to execute that freedom in my life by suffering also in the areas that I need to suffer in order to be free. I hope this is helpful to you. God bless you. And uh, looking forward to giving you the results six months from now. Um, yeah, that's it. God bless you. Bye-bye.